Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just a vibe. Paparazzi make me wanna fucking kill myself TMZ make me wanna fucking kill myself But no matter what they do, I know I'm still myself Stay strong and in the end, love life and my health If I said fuck Cole and Kendrick and Drake Then everyone in media would take the bait and post that shit But when I say how much I love them, people ghost that shit And when I talk about my feelings, people roast that shit Tell me I got a lot of money, I should roast that shit one minute you the greatest, then the next you the worst. Logic you too lyrical to be having fun with a verse. You gotta come 10 out of 10 every time, 10 out of 10 every rhyme. It's always gotta be perfect within my mind. But wait, that shit ain't fun to me. Look what being argued would be one of the greatest modern rappers in this day and age. It's done to me, it's made me hate rap. Cause it used to. I think, uh, I think we'll do the QA inside. So what's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today is just gonna be a QA. and a I thought it'd be nice to take just a small break from the vlogs and I will be back as of early next week, okay? But I decided to just throw a poll up on Instagram so if you missed out on this, you should probably follow me on Instagram and then the next Q&A. We can all be involved, all right? So we did get a couple of questions and I kinda want to dive just straight into them. Also, if you're like me and you want to chill out, make yourself a cup of tea and just relax. Enjoy the video. Right, so question question number uno, one. Uh, favorite go-to breakfast when on a cut? So for me, if I'm cutting, I want a carbless breakfast, to be honest. I like doing carb backloading or I'll do intermittent fasting and I won't eat breakfast at all. But if you're putting a gun to my head and backing me into a corner and I have to eat breakfast, Carbless breakfast is the way to go. So I like doing like scrambled egg with turkey sausages and a little like put a bit of cheese on your scrambled egg, melt it. Oh my god, thank me later, come back to me. Or you could do like a smoked salmon omelette. So just get some spinach, spring onions, two whole eggs, three eggs whites, and a bit of smoked salmon. That's lovely. And then the good old fashioned steak and eggs. For some reason, when I put them up on my story, if I'm having it for breakfast, I always get a reaction. So. Those three would be my go-to breakfasts, is my breakfasts. If I was, when I'm cutting down, that's what I'll go to. If I'm not intermittent fasting, that's what I'll go to. Something nice and carless. Question Umro two. Uh, how do you get your abs to show? So, um, abs are based on body fat percentage and unfortunately everyone's a little bit different. So I can't say to you, hey, get to like, 12% body fat and your abs will show. I know people at 12% body fat and their abs won't show. I also know people at 12% and it looks like they have a ripped six pack. It's all just based on your genetics and where your body likes to store fat the most. Um, you can't spot fat loss, if that makes sense. You can't just go, well I'm gonna do a thousand sit ups and my abs will show. No, if you have a high body fat, your abs aren't gonna show. So get yourself into a caloric deficit, get yourself doing some cardio and Hopefully, if your genetics are right, you won't have to go too low for body fat to get your abs out, but fortunately for some people, I think they do. I think they have to go down to 10% to get their abs to show, and that's just not, not that's just not nice to maintain. Question uno three. Right, uh, best tips for weight loss. This kind of ties in to the last one, but if we're talking like complete beginner and has never been in a gym or done anything before and they just want to lose weight, what I recommend you do is look at your steps. Get your steps up. So if you're on like 5,000 a day, aim for six. And then once you've kind of got six nailed down, aim for seven. That's going to improve your NEAT. So NEAT is non-exercise activity thermogenesis. In English, that basically means calories we're going to burn outside of the gym. That's going to help with that. Also get yourself into a gym. Get yourself working out even three days a week. Uh, it can be plenty, especially if you're starting out. Get yourself into a caloric deficit, get yourself tracking food. But before you even kind of focus on the um, the deficit side of things, 
Obviously, if weight loss is the goal, you probably want to look at your food and realize, right, I'm probably not eating that healthy to begin with. So what you should do is just be like, right, improve week by week, meal by meal. So start eating a healthier breakfast, start eating healthier snacks, then start eating a healthier lunch, then start eating a healthier dinner. And then that might even automatically just put you in a caloric deficit, you know what I mean? Or at least it might help get you there. And then when that's kind of sorted out, and you know you're kind of eating along along the right tracks, then get into the specifics of, right, I need to be in a calorie deficit of two, 300, I need to make sure I'm burning calories, I need to do this, this, and this. So sort your food out, improve your knee, and then get yourself into a deficit and into a gym. And you should be, you should be on the road to a healthy lifestyle from there. Uh, what do you prefer, drop sets or supersets uh, for a finisher? So, I'm gonna say drop sets because I wouldn't use a superset really as a finisher. I only have one superset as a finisher, and that's when I go into hammers, into overhands. Uh, that'd be I do that on my pull day. So, but normally I prefer like just like if I want to finish off my quads, I might do a drop set on on leg extensions. I might do I've done drop sets on shoulders. I do a lot of those. Uh, just to finish the shoulders off strong. So I'm going to say drop sets. Find them way more intense, way more challenging. Uh, superset I just use as if I'm stuck for time. If I only have like 45, 50 minutes to work out. And I have to get cardio in on top of that. I might just superset like 2-3 exercises. Um, and then just go do cardio after that. But yeah, I'd, I'd say I'll, I prefer drop sets to finish off. And then supersets if I'm just stuck for time. Uh, who you got, Poirier or McGregor? I definitely butchered Poirier's name. That's just the Irish in me. Right, I'm gonna stick with my hometown boy. I'm gonna stick with McGregor, and I'm gonna tell you why. Jeez, I nearly dropped my phone. I'm gonna tell you why I'm sticking with McGregor. I've seen interviews of him in the last two days. He wasn't doing a lot of media, uh, and I think I've seen two or three interviews, and it just seems like the old Connor's back. It just seems like the talking shit, take no shit, I don't give a fuck who's in front of me, I'm gonna go through them, type Connor is back. If he's back, Dustin, in my opinion, doesn't stand a chance. But if anything less than that turns up, then I think Dustin wins. But I'm gonna stick with McGregor, one, because I'm Irish, and two, uh, McGregor has this thing every time after he loses, he comes back 10 times better than he always has. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose McGregor. It's gonna be a sick ass fight though. I think Dana White said it's gonna be fight of the year, and I believe that. Uh, sauna or steam room? Uh, Mm. Sauna, yeah, I like boat, I like boat. I would choose the sauna just on the basis of it's just, sometimes it's challenging to stay in one, I'm like yeah. And then I love, you know when you're in a sauna and you just drench yourself with water, like ice cold water, or if you sip on it and you can feel the water going down your esophagus, class, oh it's savage. So for that reason, yeah. And then sometimes I go into a sauna or a steam room, burns my face. I don't know either. Uh, predicted 1RMs for the end of the year. Okay, so... I deadlifted 155 kilos yesterday for... And when I say this was an easy single, I mean it was an easy single. I actually have the clip, I'm gonna put it right here. See, that moved quite simple. So, deadlifts, I'm gonna say 200 kilos by the end of the year. I wanna say easily, if, if we don't go into lockdown again, because I have no faith in the Irish government, if we don't go into lockdown again and I get a full run of training, because that's the only issue I've had with powerlifting is the gym opens for like two months and then it's closed for like four. And then it opens for another two months and then it's closed for like four. And I've never gotten a straight run at it. So if I get a straight run at deadlifts and squats and bench, I know my numbers will shoot up. So I'm definitely gonna say 200. If I get a good run at deadlifts, easy 200 kilos. I benched 100 yesterday. No, not yesterday. What day are we? I benched 100 on Tuesday. I didn't get a clip of that, but Matty 
gave me the lift off and was there for a spot if I needed it. I didn't even need it. To be honest, I think I had a double or a triple. I did that for a single, but I had a double or a triple in me. I just didn't want to kill myself because I'm still in my tapering back phase. So, 100, yeah. I definitely, I think I can get 120 on bench. That's being optimistic, but I think my bench tends to fly up once I'm consistent with it. And then squat, I haven't tested squat enough to know what I feel like I could get. Yeah. Um, I feel like, honestly, I anything over 160 on squat, I would be happy with. I haven't squat as much as I liked to, or would have liked to. So 200 kilo squat, I feel like that's, no, jeez, 200 kilo deadlift, definitely doable. Judging on yesterday, I definitely had like 185 in me. I just didn't want to go that far because I'm not in, I'm not about pulling PRs and one RMs every week. So definitely had that in me. Definitely had 200 in me on that. Anything above 160 on squat, I'd be, I'd be content with. And then 120 on the bench. Being a little optimistic, I think with that, but I feel like I can get it. So I'll just have to work, and the government just can't lock me down anymore. Okay, last question. What's your idea of peace of mind and what daily activities do you do to achieve that? Uh, whew, we're ending it on a deep note, I guess. Um, peace of mind, for me, it's when I set goals and accomplish them. That's peace of mind to me. Um, so, so if I set a goal to do a certain amount of things in a day, and I get them, I'm within a peace of mind, I'm in, within a state of peace of mind for that because, I don't know, I accomplished something that day. So the goals that I, I take, are the steps I have to take to achieve my goals that day. Once I achieve those, I'm in peace of mind. So my steps to achieving a peace of mind are actually achieving my goals and just doing the stuff I need to do to that. I also have a weird thing with the sea. Like I could go and sit on a beach, I can go and just, zen out for like three four hours and listen to the the sea and the waves crashing i can do that for hours man that's another sense of peace of mind for me uh family and friends taking care of and making sure they're happy is a peace of mind i get very wound up when they're not so yeah uh, they're the three three main things just make sure i've achieved my goals if i can get to a sea i don't live near a sea so i relish that anytime i can get to it and then so making sure family and friends are kind of really taken care of. That to me is a peace of mind. So, yeah. Guys, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, leave it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. We've gotten a lot of subscribers in the last couple of days. So, hiya. My name's Ganzo. Nice to meet you. Um, and yeah, same with Instagram. We've gotten a lot of followers on Instagram too. So, guys, if you're new to the channel... Leave it a like, hit me up in the comment section, and if you're not subscribed, please do. Appreciate you. Until the next video, guys, we're going to trust the process. We're out of here.